I appreciate the invitation so much. I think Nancy maybe was the first person that I got uh, that got in touch with me, and I visited with Lynn and with Lori, and so uh, hats off to all of you for your work here. I'm sure it's very much as it is at home. Um, historically minded folks are the few and the proud, yeah. but uh, <laughs> we we get a lot of good things done, and. Uh, Y'all are, are doing a fabulous job. I commend you for documenting your own history as you go. This is wonderful with the, the food, the food, gosh, the food was tremendous. And, uh, we excel. <laughs> yes, you do. Food. You have to let my belt out a notch or two. So that was wonderful. And, and the stories that you're collecting now, um, what a gift you're passing on to the next generation of historians. So, and thanks again for letting me be a part of this. And I guess maybe I'll just briefly tack on to the commercial. <laughs> um, the project in Barnston uh, is, is where that Big Blue Indian Reservation was kind of centered out of Barnston. But of course the reservation, as you'll see on our map, extended into Kansas. And Okito has a wonderful little museum there with a lot of Oto, Missouri artifacts uh, and a lot of stories. And uh, I'll also say that Odell, Nebraska, which is in Gage County, which is also Barnston, just opened their Interpretive Trail Center in May. So they might be uh, good folks to partner with and to look to. I know in, in all of the projects that I am involved in, I, I like to partner with whomever is within striking distance. And especially when you're talking about wanting to attract tourists, bus groups, that sort of thing, the more interesting stops you can make along a trail, the better off you are and the longer they will stay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to do some more work together, uh, whether it's on trail history or Indian history or, or whatever. I can also appreciate where you are with your planning and visioning with what you want to do with this place. I had the good opportunity to work in my hometown, Wymore, Nebraska, to start the Welsh Heritage Center, uh, and that was in 2000. And uh, it's, it's a going concern today. And one of the things we did probably a year and a half, two years into that, was to have a board retreat and a visioning session. And that's what it was all about, was just brainstorming. So I, you're on the right track. <laughs> so I want to certainly encourage you uh, in that direction. Um, we have got today uh, a few images for you and thought this would probably be the best way for you to see them. Uh, I've got at the beginning some of the older images that we have that were taken that were related to Barnston and the Indian Reservation there. And then the last part of the program we've got some images from the Living History and Inheritance Heritage Weekend that we did last November. The Barnston Oto Missouri Reservation Heritage Project is actually a committee of Gage County Heritage Preservation. And that group is actually in ownership of the building that's in Marston. We refer to it as a lot of things. We refer to it as the Mission House, the Indian School, and a farmhouse because it's been all of those things <laughs> in its history. Um, I was president of Gage County Heritage Preservation uh, right up until December, this last December, when we moved to Lincoln. So now I'm a resident of Lancaster County. But um, I'm still very happy to be the chair of this Oto, Missouri Reservation Heritage Project. Uh, I'm sure that you have discovered in, uh, in any of the work that you do, whether it's professional uh, or a labor of love, like most of the, the heritage projects are, that the work that you're able to get done is all about the people, and it's all about your relationships with those people. And uh, when you get like-minded people together who have a passion for what they're doing, you can't stop them. So I'm happy to continue with this project, and I'm, I'm so pleased at the possibilities that we have for developing this. Um, this is a sketch. I wish you could see it better. Major Albert Green did this sketch. And you can see in it earth lodges, teepees, and uh, frame, frame buildings. That's what Barnston looked like at one time. Major Green has been a tremendous resource. His diaries, his letters, his sketches are really the first documentation of the Oto, Missouri 
uh, in Nebraska. This is the reservation, a map of the reservation. And you can see the Kansas-Nebraska line here. And you can see it, it came out just, just north of, well, actually just a little bit north of Oquito proper there, north of Marysville. 162,000 acres that the Oto Missouri were basically confined to um, in 1855. Prior to that, they made their home near Bellevue, up in the Omaha area. That's where they were living when Lewis and Clark first encountered them. The Oto Missouri is a relatively small tribe, but they have the distinction of being the tribe of first contact with Lewis and Clark when they came through. At the height of their population, when they were in this area of Kansas and Nebraska, there were 600 of them. When uh, they left to go to Red Rock, Oklahoma uh, in 1881, there were just a little over 300 of them. So they've always been a relatively small tribe, but an influential one. The route that they took to Red Rock, Oklahoma was straight down 77. So my guess is they passed through here. And I would love to know if you run across any stories or diary entries uh, about that removal. Uh, the group came through in October of 1881. They were on foot, and it took them 18 days to walk, essentially, from Bardston to Red Rock, Oklahoma. They pushed and pulled carts and wagons with their possessions. This is what the Indian Mission School looked like when it was first constructed. This is actually the second school that was on that reservation. The first one was burned down. Uh, this one was also set on fire. As you can imagine, Indian mission schools were not popular institutions. Um, and this is that building in the process of being torn down. Um, and you can see its porch is stripped off. The siding is basically gone. What we have left is about a third a third of this building. And we're still trying to figure out exactly whether we have a portion of the building or if we just have a building that's built with remnants from the original building. But this is the sign, the clapboard sign, that hangs on the, the little building that we have right now. And these pictures now from here onward were taken in November of last year at our Indian Heritage Weekend that we hosted. We had a day of living history where we invited local school students. We had 80 students, which we thought for our first year of doing this was a good turnout. The woman you see here is Lorene Bredesel, and she is a historian extraordinaire. She's the librarian at the Beatrice Public Library. She's welcoming the students. Jan Carr is on the left. Edna Cook is on the right. Edna was actually born in this house when it was a farmhouse and lived there the first 18 years of her life. She still lives in Barnston. She's sharp as a tack, and her memories of what this building used to be have just been invaluable. That is Kent Wilson, and he is dressed as Major Albert Green. He's portraying that character for the students. And Kent uh, was president of the Historic Society, Gage County Historic Society in Beatrice for many years. So he was a great one to do this, and he can sketch. So he was the perfect candidate to be Major Albert Green. Major Green was the last Indian agent on this reservation and was much loved by both Indians and, and white people that he worked with. There's Jan doing her session in the house. She portrayed Mrs. Fricky, who was one of the early 20th century housewives that made, made their home in this farmhouse. And she actually brought a little can of artifacts that she'd been collecting out of her fields at home from when she was a little girl. So that was a neat, a neat addition. Uh, on the right, kind of in silhouette, you see Rayma Franson, and she is portraying our school marm at the Indian Mission School. Uh, this is the first time that she did a first person kind of, uh, representation of somebody, but she did a great job of kind of talking about what it was like to be teacher to the Indian students. The gentleman in the shiny blue jacket is Matt Sitting Bear Jones, and he is an Oto Missouri scholar who lives in Lincoln, Nebraska. He's also a wonderful resource to us, and we're glad to have his support and interest in this project. It's, it's a shared history of the settlers that came in, but also of the people who lived here, the native people who lived here before the 
settlers. That's one of the uh, chiefs that he had a portrait of that was a part of the information he brought. And there's Matt inside the teepee. He, in addition to being a scholar and an Oto Missouri descendant himself, he's a fabulous storyteller. The kids loved him. <laughs> he's also a veteran um, of the Vietnam War, uh, which is a, a major point of distinction in the Indian community, of course. Uh, that is Bill Hawkins, and he portrays a character named Red Hawk, who was a free Lewis and Clark uh, explorer who came out independently to this part of the country, learned from the Indians, and adopted their ways. And uh, that nice big TV belongs to Bill. There's our whole cast of characters at the end of a long but very satisfying day. As I said, we did this in November, and you can see how we're dressed. It was a beautiful day. Chilly, but uh, we had sunshine, and there's Bill's great teepee. It was amazing to me how quickly he set this up, and he did it alone. Uh, it makes sense that they would be easy to transport and set up. <coughs> this is Sonny Little Crow, and he is a descendant uh, of some of the folks who were on this reservation before they moved to Oklahoma. And this was his first visit to this place. <coughs> Uh, he and his wife Janet and his mother Rose came to be a part of that weekend and it was just, it was moving for all of us. Um, he talked about what an honor it was to be there in that place, uh, to honor his own ancestors. There you see kind of an interesting picture, kind of like Major Green sketch. You see the teepee, you see this old school building, and then of course there's dance. So <laughs> time marches on. Uh, we're, we were also very pleased have our window replacement project done. So all the windows in this building have been replaced. That's Janet Little Crow, Sonny's wife. She is a seamstress. She's wearing one of her camp dresses. Uh, and uh, she's just, she's a wonderful lady. She is a Cherokee, but she she knows her Oto history. And she, she sews regaled for several different groups. She made this beautiful shirt that I have on. And this is part of their display. Janet, in particular, did a tremendous amount of research. Uh, she collected images of people, uh, Otos from yesteryear, as well as contemporary uh, members of the Oto tribe. She also got a lot of pictures and artifacts from the Smithsonian, that you can see on the right side. A lot of the crafts that the Oto Missouri made and did during their time in Nebraska got lost in that move. When I first heard that, I assumed that perhaps the whole ordeal of being forced out of your native land was so traumatic that they just left those things behind. But Janet said no, they were essentially refugees. And a lot of it they had to do because they were on foot. They didn't want to lose those traditions, but circumstances forced them to showing some of the regalia there on the right hand side and I'll we'll show you a little bit more of that on my jacket later. This is Anna Sunny in, in uh, one of his dress, I think this was a, did she say this was a straight dance, uh, a native straight dance costume. Uh, and Sunny did a lot of singing and drumming for us. Uh, he alone is a repository for a lot of the traditional Oto and Oto language songs. They're not recorded anywhere else. He's got them up here. And we got to hear them as a part of this weekend. <coughs> Again, we were really pleased. This is Saturday, and so of course we had a lot of adults come this day. Through the course of the weekend, we were able to share with, with about uh, 180 adults and about 80 students. So we were really pleased with uh, with the outreach. And there you are. <laughs> you didn't get me in there. You bet. A couple of times. <laughs> and if there's anything you want to add about that Oh, I, I really enjoyed meeting Jan. And, and afterward, after she gave a presentation, it was just so much fun listening to her. Yes. We had a great time just sitting around our own little pal about talking. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's yeah, good. And there again are 
Sonny and his mother Rose. Rose was demonstrating some of the dances. And um, in fact, Stephen took most of these pictures. And this one was just especially beautiful. And I, I made an 8 by 10 print of this for each of them to take home. And uh, Rose, she was just, she was really touched by that. And she said, I was just thanking Grandfather Son for shining on our event that day. So, it, as I said, it was a neat time of relationship building, uh, as well as celebrating the history. Here again is Bill Hawkins, or our Red Hawk character. He was also there on Saturday, set up in his teepee. And one of his programs is to go around and collect whatever happens to be in season to show uh, what they ate, the different foods and how they were used, both for medicinal purposes as well as just for eating. And there again, a shot of Bill's teepee. The, on the feedback forms from the kids, the teepee, far and away, was the most popular <laughs> item. So it was interesting for me, too. We had to sit down, you know, <coughs> talking about all that. It was, yes. It was very good. There's Matt Jones again on the right, Lorene Redesil, and uh, Rose Little Co Pro Grant. What was really neat is Matt discovered that they're actually related. The little pros and Matt have some family in common, so it was a family reunion for them as well. Here's Matt's display, and I would certainly commend uh, Matt to you also uh, as being somebody that could come and, and speak to you and, and certainly give you the, the native perspective. And he has a wonderful collection of, of resources uh, specifically specific to the Oto and Missouri tribes. And there's another shot of the teepee right next to the wood frame building. All we need is that earth lodge. So, <laughs> anybody knows how to build an earth lodge? So I do you know? I would love to put one on the property. And he lives in Nebraska, right? Uh, this gentleman that owns the teepee. Yes, Bill is in Lincoln. Okay. Mm -hmm. He had his teepee set up at State Fair this year. Oh. And here are the Little Crow family with a part of their display at Homestead National Monument of America. Uh, we were able to partner with them. It worked out very nicely. The homestead is probably maybe 35 miles from Barston. And so we were able to share some travel expenses. And they uh, were able to benefit by having a wonderful program. November, of course, is Native American Heritage Month. That's a national uh, designation. And so they were pleased to have the Little Crows, and of course it gave them a new venue to visit people who hadn't come to our Barkson event. And there's the flag of the Oto Missouri tribe. One of the things I learned early on, um, and I've not being a native person, I'm kind of